I V M. It's it's not a rigid code of conduct. It's very old school way of thinking about etiquette. Mm-hmm. You have to be prim and proper. You have to do this. If the, you go, if you do this, that's not very nice. In fact, one thing is definitely not etiquette if you mm-hmm. correct someone's manners. Mm-hmm. That's unless she's a grandmother, your mother, or a coach. So even if I notice an etiquette faux pas, I shouldn't be correcting you or mm. anybody. That is an etiquette faux pas that mm. goes against etiquette. The whole idea of etiquette is make the other person feel in your company. It doesn't matter which fork and knife you use. It doesn't matter if you have a little bit of a, a problem with your dining etiquette. All that can be taught. But how I feel in your company matters. So then why do we have so much of ceremony around which fork, which knife? That's manners. Why that do I have asparagus tongs versus, <laughs> you know, so like what is the funda of all of that? That's just manners. It's just nice to learn if you learn, if suppose if you're dining with a client in America and if you know he's an elderly gentleman, he's twisting and turning and eating in an American way mm. and you reciprocate and you mirror the same. If you're dining with someone from Britain and you know how to, you know, place your, uh, cutlery in a British way. You bet, m- build better relationships. Same thing with continental way of dining. It's good to learn, mm. but that's not everything about etiquette. Okay, so it is not that there is one universal way of using a knife and a fork. Three ways. Th- there are three ways of yeah. doing and this. And if you, if you just don't let go of Asian and obviously Japanese way and Asian way, t- totally different Indian way, huge, huge uh, about... Different you know, how to have Indian etiquette is beautiful. Mm. Um, yes, so when we teach Western dining in continental, European, uh, sorry, continental, British, and American. So these are three. I didn't think the Americans had a code of conduct in terms of etiquette. Oh yeah, etiquette. they twist and turn. S- but that is their style. That's would their that style. have been an etiquette thing? Because like etiquette would have come out from Europe and, mm-hmm. and the UK according Normally. to me, right? Mm-hmm. So European aristocrats. Correct, right? So it is the royal families that would have created these rules of manners. Mm-hmm. So I think it was, I think, from the French courts where that is it started. Mm-hmm. And then from there, they said that if you have to be in our company, you need to know these forms of manners. It's not Louis the Philippe, yes. Correct? Louis the Philippe started this. And then you start going down and it was not necessary for, for example, the peasants to know these manners at that point of time. But now we're saying that etiquette needs to be universal. It is, because we live in an egalitarian society, Hmm. right? It's not aristocrats versus the commoners anymore. So what the the protocol, the way to use, the way to dine, the way to socialize, the way to drink your wine properly, that's actually the aristocrats wanted to have their own little set of conduct because the upper class wanted to differentiate themselves. But that's historical, not anymore. Hmm. Okay, so because we operate from an egalitarian society, Mm. it's not, I mean, it'll be, you'll be laughed at if you even talk about it. Absolutely, and and, and there is so much pushback on the royal families and the aristocracy, and they're saying that why do we want to be like those privileged people? I I have an issue with the word privilege, but it's constantly there, right? And in that context, when we are trying to, or not trying to be, but like when we are learning about these fancy ways of eating or behaving. That's just madness. Mm. It's a huge misunderstanding that etiquette is for the privileged society, for the upper class, for the aristocrats, for only the elites. Complete, I'm sorry, but not true. Mm. Etiquette, you can, I mean, I have met people from very humble society. They are very gracious, you know. Um, being gracious, being kind, being nice to somebody's etiquette. Okay, so the manners, dining etiquette, how do you shake your hand, how, how to create a first impression, a coach like me or you can teach. Mm. But how to be a good human being? Very difficult. It's an upbringing. Correct. Right? And in fact, all through we learn about manners. And if you break it down as manners, then it's completely different. It's the way that your parents taught you how to behave or society taught you how to behave in this way. I remember having a conversation with my dad ages ago about this. He said that, why does Japan have so many manners and rules? Create, create. Right? It was a very interesting observation. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm going next week. And the whole idea of Japan was that because they're in such a close proximity Mm. to each other, they needed the manners in order to live harmoniously with each other. So the idea of manners was, again, to make the other person feel comfortable in this context. Mm. What are some etiquettes for 
the business place or the workplace oh very um, we we witness it all the time that you know shaking hands mm. sitting down mm. or you know offering a handshake across the table mm. not standing up and so the whole idea of handshake is you stand up and you show your entire body so you sort of walk around the table offer a handshake offer your seat offer your guest a seat and then you come back and take your seat mm. you definitely don't shake hand across the table right so these are the simple things but mm. again etiquette is not it's really starts with how do i make you feel mm. americans are good at it mm. americans they don't follow the rigid code of conduct of you know the being so prim and proper being so you know uptight you know um the europeans and the british we they are more you know obviously they take etiquette and manners very seriously and they practice it and all of that but um so i studied in europe and london in in britain i became an image consultant and then i went to do my masters in uh, in business etiquette from america so i was a little culture shocked i was like what am i learning mm. so casual mm. so as a as an etiquette consultant when i was growing up and when i was educating myself in europe and in britain i was taught all everything about manners about being the prim and proper about being the very fancy and upper class and this is how to do it but when you go to america it's about conflict resolution business etiquette they don't care how to hold a glass of wine by the stem or not but mm. they do care if my relationship with you is good or not mm. so it's actually more about making the person feel comfortable absolutely than the showcasing of the manners absolutely because america is a business society it's not they don't they are not aristocrats right they are working class they were always working class so mm. it's a business society now india is also like that right now india mm. is a business community So right now obviously manners we follow the manners of Britain for example but principles of etiquette are very very important right now So what kind of people um come to you to learn about etiquette like business how, family kids business uh, the air of business family kids because mm. when they are um before they are introduced to the board because they have to learn to build better relationship with people from very different generations so for example the air to an industrialist would be probably 34 mm. or 32 but then he probably he's either going to get an mba from ivy league school or come back but then before you introduce that person to the board he has to look credible and he has to be perceived as a credible good person likability factor mm. is a very important factor in etiquette mm. you know and how do you work on likability when you learn good manners and etiquette hmm. the likability factor comes immediately so coming back to personal branding hmm. we teach a lot about personal branding so personal branding starts with a few notes credibility efficiency likability and trustworthiness hmm. so credibility is you have to be good at your job if you're not competent everything else fails correct so you have to be credible hmm. you have to get that mba you have to get that basic education and then uh, efficiency you have to be efficient people should be able to depend on you you can't be so casual about it casual things. about mm. everything you mm. can't be late you can't be you have to take things more professionally mm -hmm. so and you have to show that this is you know my work or my relationship is my priority so that is very important so efficiency comes mm. and then likability is like etiquette when you make the other person feel good when you're more efficient in your work mm. when you're more giving right that conflict resolution if you can resolve a relationship situation very nicely when credibility efficiency and likability factors are working for you the trust comes automatically mm. and that is the whole idea of personal branding in image consulting that's what we teach we teach how to be the best version of yourself so image consulting is one way all the image consultants are doing only style analysis color analysis body analysis wardrobe analysis personal shopping photo shoot all of that that's on the surface level but etiquette the non verbal communication relationship building body language your communication your business etiquette your first impression when image consulting and etiquette goes hand in hand that's superb your personal branding you see the transformation very interesting because this relationship building is something that is very very important very and you know i keep talking to people about this saying that most of us don't know how to make friends like mm. you don't know the steps of building a relationship 
we've because got because three quarter of the world have social anxiety there you go right if you're socially anxious how are we going to go out and make friends most of our friends are people that we knew of in school yeah. and that's it and then we might pick up a few as in our work life but there are people who are brilliant at building relationships what are the things that these people do correctly what are Some things that we can learn some people are just very social mm. and outgoing mm. growing up but if you're not mm. you can't afford to be a wallflower in today's world mm. because no matter how competent you are no matter how credible you are if you don't open your mouth and if you don't go and socialize with other human being if you hide yourself behind social media it's not going to work look at american business society who are in the front mm. right the finance people the hedge fund people you have to be you have to have people skills if you can't have then hire a coach and get it done mm. you know what i mean because and do it do it when you're in your late 20s early 30s it is going to be difficult when you're 50s to change later to change later everything else can be taught mm. etiquette and you know a little image consulting um, uh, communication public speaking all of that is one thing but that social anxiety you have to work on it i v m